<laughs> Hi, everybody. Hey, everyone. Oh, sorry, we got an echo. One second. Okay. Okay. Turn it all the way down. All right. Hopefully, it's working now. Let us know if you can hear us in the comments. Uh, at one time, we did a live stream where we were live for like five minutes before we knew that no one could hear us. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That's why that we fun. always check. So we were just sitting here talking to each other and laughing, and everyone's just like, uh, "Okay, we yeah. don't li read lips." <laughs> that was before we had this cool software that pops your comments up over here, and we can pull them up on screen and doing all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. welcome to our Tuesday live stream. Um, happy for you to be here. Happy for us to be here. It's beautiful weather here in Oklahoma right now. Just unseasonably warm. It's in the 80s again. But oh, we have somebody else from Oklahoma. Yeah, a couple people. We've got and Carrie too. Hi, Carrie. <laughs> I'm Carrie. <laughs> yeah, and like Teresa is talking about here, it is very beautiful, but there is cold weather coming. So yes, there is. Um, fortunately, we have built our gardens in such a way that we can handle that, and we can handle pretty much any any weather that's thrown at them because we are. In Oklahoma, one of the hardest places to grow food because the weather is just like it's 80 today. It'll be 20s here in a couple of days. It'll yo-yo back and forth. And that can be really hard on the plants. So um, today we're going to be talking about what we do to help with that. Um, and also we're going to be taking your questions. So uh, we're going to try not to go quite as long today on our topic. So we have more room for answering your questions because last time I felt bad that we uh, weren't able to get to well, a lot of them we weren't able to get to. So, yeah. so many people had great today. questions. I love it. Yep. So if you have questions um, or if you have comments, if you have something funny to say, throw it in the chat. <laughs> and... See, I like this. <laughs> <laughs> Teresa, yes. If you don't like the weather, wait a few hours. It's that's Oklahoma. very true. I feel yep. like that's a lot of places, though. Yep. They used to say that back in Arizona when I grew up, too. Yep. Yeah. So if you leave a comment, you'll be entered. To, uh, to win our giveaway today, which is a one-year free premium membership to the Seed to Spoon app, which is the app that, that we made. So if you're not familiar with the app, which I'm sure most of you are because there was a push notification that went right to your phone that brought you in here. So, um, But if not, you can download it on iOS and Android. It gives you all the information you need about how to grow food. We'll show more about it here in a little bit. There's a, some new features we just released that I'm actually hoping that we can show a little bit at the end as well. So... Um, so let's jump in and start talking about our topic for today. So again, frost tips. How can you keep your plants happy when they when they go outside? Because this now, depending on where you'll be putting plants outside quite yet, I saw someone in here from Seattle. I, I doubt you're doing a lot of outdoor transplanting quite yet, unless it's like in a greenhouse or something like well, that. I feel like even we just barely started. Yeah. Here. Yeah, we started pretty much about two or three weeks ago. And we have a really big test garden that we built where we are trying out every variety. Uh, our goal is to try out every variety in our app. That It's going to be a few years before we get through <laughs> everything. But we have started with broccoli and spinach and mustard and Swiss chard, lettuce and cabbage. We got every single variety mm -hmm. of those that we carry in our app. And they are all in our garden that we've been working on back there. You can uh, follow all that on Instagram, too. We put out a lot of stuff showing what we're doing in our garden. Um, but yeah, so that's what we've got going. We have a lot of stuff outside. Now it's all going to be cold hardy stuff though, which ties into, Oh, I mentioned our giveaway. I always forget there's a slide for it. I know. Well, Every it's because time I do I've this. forgotten it before. So I always want to make sure that yep. I have that there and yeah, we make sure that everybody knows. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Let's talk a bit about how you know when to plant, because like I said, we routed off everything we're growing here in Oklahoma, but it's going to depend, like what you can grow right now depends on where you are. And this is the primary reason that we made the app to begin with, was so we could know when to plant things and what was available to plant now. So this is actually the very first version of the app that we released back in 2018. The first thing it did was it didn't calculate planting dates at that point, but it did tell you how many weeks before your last spring frost. Um, before you plant it, which there's a brand new feature we just released this week in the app now at the top of the dashboard. It has a countdown to how many weeks until your last frost, which I think is kind of like the Christmas countdown thing. We have it on our <laughs> counter. It stays until Christmas. That's how I feel about it. The idea for that feature came, I kept like pulling up and, and just thinking like, yeah, trying to remind myself, how many weeks are we from this? Because I'm reading seed packets and I'm doing all this and could never keep track of how many weeks we are away. So we thought, That'll be a fun feature to put out there. It's a, a countdown to weeks until frost. 
It also makes it easier to find the feature that lets you change your frost date. So if um, the frost date that we calculate is estimated, it's estimated based off the last 100 years of data. But if you want to bet on a different date, you can do that easily just by tapping that link. And then you can change the frost date to be whatever you want. And all the dates will recalculate based off of that. So um, the dashboard has several features that show you exactly what you can grow right now. There's the Let's Grow uh, card you can see in this far left screenshot. That'll show you exactly what you can plant now. Um, lots of different ways to find what you can get, what you can grow now. If you go to any plant page, it's going to have there on the detail page, the, the dates that you can specifically grow for your area, all that kind of stuff. We've talked a lot about all of this and seed starting, and we've shown a lot of this over the past few workshops and webinars. So we're not going to get too much into that, but if you want to know more about how to start your own seeds, you definitely should start your own seeds. You're going to save a lot of money. You're going to have healthier plants. And have happier plants. You're gonna have more fun varieties. in the garden. Yep. <laughs> so, all right, let's dive in and talk about the specific section tips. Oh, I guess. Well, so yeah. first of all, we do want to make sure that you know there are only a few plants, obviously, that you can't you can't be like trying to do some of these tips that we're gonna talk about with things like tomatoes or peppers, like things like that are not gonna last. At least here, where we are, maybe in California. And Florida, I'm jealous. You can get away with planting those right now, but um, not here. So we're going to talk about tips for like these cool season crops, things that we can extend the seasons for and get started now and all of that. So, yeah, I mean, you can see the size. So things like root crops um, that we planted a lot of root crops yesterday, actually. We did a lot of beets and carrots, things like that. We have a lot of greens and herbs peas too, and any sort of like broccoli, cauliflower, kale, and then even certain flowers too will do okay in the uh, cool season. So things like pansies, um, mums are good, asters, snapdragons, even. like there's there's a bunch of uh, just cool season um, flowers that you can grow too. So these are all the things that we're starting to work outside now. Now, these things all went through the process of being hardened off before we took them outside. Mm -hmm. So that's part of it too. So check out last week's if you missed on how to transition your plants outside. One key to a lot of this though is our use of containers. So we have a lot of these smart pots that we use. These are fabric raised beds. We've got some here. Can you grab that tiny one behind me right there or behind you? We've got a little pepper in one of these little transplanters. This is a one gallon okay. smart pot, but you can see this is like a fabric raised bed. We have all sizes of these all, all the way up to hundred gallons. And these are what we grow a lot of, especially like all of our peppers for the most part will go in a smart pot because it makes it so much easier for us to grow them in our unpredictable weather here in the spring in Oklahoma. So we're starting to transplant our peppers into these little one, ga one gallon transplanters now. That's what you just saw. It's going to live in that for a long time. It may live in that until we transplant it outside for good, like into a bigger smart pot. Um, cause it's gonna, that'll be a good size for it. Um, and what we'll do is we'll move it inside on cold days. We'll move it outside on the nice days. So, um, it's a bit of a pain to have to move all the peppers. Um, some tips, if you're growing a lot of peppers, like we are, uh, just a couple things I'll throw out there. Like one, one thing we like to use is, is get a pallet, like a wooden pallet, and then, you can move that pallet back and forth. Now I have like a pallet jack to do it, or if you have a tractor or something again, like this is for large scale, but just so you understand like the scale that we're trying to grow in, like we're trying to grow again. Every, we have every single pepper in the app we do. going um, <laughs> multiples of every pepper. We're going to have a lot of peppers. So um, containers make it possible for us to do a lot of this. Now we don't grow a lot of like in the early spring. I just have, like you'll see what we're growing in here in a minute, but they're all wooden raised beds. We put these covers over. So it's a little bit different. Um, well, I was going to say too, for before we move on for yeah. the containers, like a huge benefit is like if you do have a, a, a frost or something like that, like especially with the peppers, because if they get cold and they'll get stunted and they sometimes will not recoup after that. So you want to make sure you protect them. So a huge benefit, especially of these smart pots, they have handles on them, which you can just carry and bring them inside. Like we, we've moved a lot of ours before in the past, the peppers, tomatoes, anything like that. Um, if you have any sort of 
weather coming in or anything like that. You can move them undercover or inside. There was one year we had a bunch of them, a bunch of smart pots in our in our tub. I mean, you do what you can, right? <laughs> yeah, and I do recommend the like five gallon smart pots for that reason because they're not too heavy to move. Yeah. And if you have a large family like like we do, it can be a family bonding moment where all of you move. move Everybody plants go together. grab a smart pot. There's certainly a lot of <laughs> nights here where we're all bringing in tran- like our seedlings from outside from a day of hardening off or yeah. something like that. So, so I just want to mention that that's a huge benefit of having container gardening, especially for frost areas. Yep. Um, another thing that we do a lot of in this early spring with our transplants is we try and mulch around them. And if you think about it, it's basically putting a little blanket over the over the roots, you know, like insulating the roots and making it to where on those really cold nights they don't get quite as cold because it's not as important that the leaves don't get really cold. It's more important that the roots and around that area doesn't get too cold. It's all about the soil temperature. So that's one way that you can keep your soil temperature up is to do that. Another thing we'll do in the spring as well is spread, uh, you know, a layer of compost over, um, or, you know, mix that in. And then the, the color of the compost, like the dark, brings in more heat. And it also helps trap some of the heat and, and do some of that as well. So mulching is also really important um, year round, really. But especially in the really cold and in the really hot is when mulching really matters. And the in-between, you can get away without doing it. But So there's a lot of different things that you can put on top of beds, too, to help to protect them. There's things you can buy, and then we'll show you some DIY options that we have, too, here in a bit. But there's this frost blanket right here. Super fast and easy. You just lay it over top of your seedlings. You can get that one at, like, Park Seed. They have those. Um but they're just super easy. You just lay it over top of them. Yeah. Yep. And then we can show you what we do. <laughs> okay. So here's a picture of our garden from, uh, it was probably like a few weeks ago. We yeah. had snow. Wasn't it a few weeks ago? Yeah, it yeah. was, believe it or not. We mm -hmm. actually had plants going in there. We had some transplants in there. Yep. So this is what it looked like a few weeks ago here. And you can see these greenhouse covers we have over our gardens. So we have these on year round on a large number of our raised beds and we don't always have greenhouse plastic over it. Um, sometimes we switch it out uh, to like we're starting to switch it out now actually over to frost blankets um, like the uh, has a lot of different names. Like insect netting. Insect too, netting, yeah. frost blanket, um, shade like light shade cloth. Because it works for multiple things. So yeah. people call it different, different exactly. things. Exactly. So, um, but the point is, is these go a long ways towards helping your plants survive really cold temperatures. So the air inside of the greenhouse area is still going to get really cold at night. It doesn't change that. But during the day, when the sun is out, it makes a big difference on temperatures. And your plants having that extra break during the day to not be exposed. So like when it's, you know, 25 degrees outside, but it's sunny then it's going to be 50 in there and your plants get that break and the soil warms up and it helps regulate it. So it's not 25 degrees, 24 hours a day on that plant. They get the break for its warmth at night. It still gets cold, but all the plants we have out there like broccoli and kale and that whole list of plants we talked about earlier, like the cold and they do fine in it. They just don't like being completely frozen for too long if they're too young. So, these help a lot. It also helps with like with this snow, for example, um, or ice. Like we get ice storms here that can tear our plants up and damage things. This keeps all of that off of the plants and makes it to where we really see a noticeable difference in our plants when we use these versus when we don't. So we we used to live in the city and we had these built on all of our gardens and we use them every season. Then when we moved out here to the country, we thought, well, Maybe we can see if we can get away without it, you know, let's not necessarily build them all up everywhere and then to see how it goes. And it didn't go as well as it used to go. So we have uh, started all new gardens. We're building from scratch. And we're building a lot of it based on the way that we did it in the city, which is a lot of use of these for things that get heavily attacked by insects, especially. I know we're not talking about insects. We're talking about cold. But an important part of these is that they protect you against the uh, butterflies and moss that lay the caterpillars that will just completely destroy your brassica plants, which are the broccoli and kale and 
all of those primarily are going in these greenhouses. So um, we don't plan. We battled harlequin bugs too. Oh my gosh, they were so bad. Oh my gosh. So I can't wait to actually get brassicas this year because I feel like they ate it all. They got a lot of our food. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. So these help out uh, just a tremendous amount. Now, one important thing that uh, I have to mention is is, um, if you're going to use these greenhouse covers and you have the plastic on it, you have to go out and vent it every day. So just put a piece of wood in there to prop it up because the temperatures on sunny days get really hot in a hurry. When it was 70 here the other day, it was 105 in those greenhouses. So you've got to make sure you're doing that. It's a little extra work you got to put into it. That's one of the reasons why we're starting to switch all of our coverings over to the shade cloth slash insect netting slash frost blanket <laughs> um, is because we don't have to vent those. Those are breathable. Uh, air and water can get through them. Um, water doesn't go like immediately. It kind of runs off a little bit. But the point is, is they don't have the same issues that the plastic has as far as like getting really hot inside of there. And if you're in like the really far north, um, first of all, I really recommend a couple of books uh, from Elliot Coleman. Elliot Coleman, I believe. Awesome. Um, Four Seasons Harvest is one of them. But he grows up in the north. I want to say Vermont. And he, you know, pioneered a lot of concepts around using um, double layers of protection and seeing you know, like, so basically you could build two of these, like one within that, um, and then you get extra layers of protection from that too. So there's a YouTube channel called One Yard Revolution that I, I don't, he doesn't make videos anymore, but all his videos are still up. And um, I'm a big fan of, of his videos and his, and his work that he did on researching a lot of this up in the cold. He's up in Chicago, I believe. Um, and he shows a lot of how to use these too. So if you're up north, um, especially like these can be very handy for the cold, but if you're down here in the south, then it's all about the bugs for us, really, because a lot of these plants will survive just fine without this protection out there. We're getting um, a few extra weeks. Like we were able to start a lot of our things a few weeks early because of them. Yeah, that's but, one of the nice things about it is we get a yeah. little bit of a head start. But we do have some tests that we're doing where we have beds that are not covered and we're going the exact same plant side by side. So if you want to see exactly the difference that it makes and how that goes, uh, follow us on Instagram or TikTok. Those are probably the best places to see that because we put out stuff three, four, five times a day that we're putting out from interesting or things we learn in our, in our garden. So, um, yes, Teresa, uh, Andrew, can you put a link to the shade cloth? I know we have it up on our uh, up on Park Seed. Um, I believe it's the previous one, right? Is that the one that you have a link for it on there? It's the QR code. Is it the, which slide is it? Oh, right there. Is it? Okay, cool. So on this slide right here, there's a QR code next to that picture. If you scan that QR code, it will take you to Park Seed, which is the store that we use, uh, that, that we are in partnership with through our app. Um, and you can, you can buy it right through, right through there. Okay. And we have a 15% off discount. Yes, uh, Spoon 15. Pop it up. We'll save you 15%. We'll pop that up real fast so that you all have that. Mm. You can use that on anything in the app. So Spoon 15 will save you 15%. And also, if you are a yearly uh, subscriber, you get free shipping on all of your purchases through the app. So that's something we rolled out a few months ago. We're really excited about it. Um, we've gotten a lot of really good feedback from that. Um, and reminder, we are giving away um, a free membership, um, a yearly membership at the end of this live stream. So if you have any questions, comments, funny things, <laughs> <laughs> throw that in chat and that will enter you uh, to win a free year. Okay. So another thing that we see on this slide here over on the right is something else you can do on a smaller scale to protect your plants. So what you see here is a pepper plant that has one of those five gallon water jugs that you buy for the, uh, like the office uh, water coolers. You know, you can get them at the grocery store. Um, a lot of times you can find these, like people that, you can come across them is the point I'm making. You cut the bottom off and then you can put them over your plant and you can put a stake in the middle. It'll stake it in place and that will help create like a little mini greenhouse that has some venting on top. Now it's still gonna get really hot in there and the reason why I don't use these a whole lot where I am is beginning again, the weather's so unpredictable. Like if I have 15 of these out in the garden and then 
that's a sudden hot, uh, it gets hot, and I've got to remember what, like, I've got to go get them all. It's just, this I've screwed up for too like many times. An emergency situation. Or hail like storms. If we have a hail storm coming, like, perfect for hail We've storms. gone out and like put the, put things over the, our, our yeah. plants we want to save. And, yeah. yeah. Or if I lived up in the north, like somewhere like Michigan or something like that, I bet this is a great strategy because it's not going to get quite as hot. Mm-hmm. Not going to have random 90 degree days. <laughs> okay. And go out. What's that? Do you want me to go out and show? Yes. All right. So we're going to try something new. Normally we do these live streams kind of in the same place, but I wanted to show y'all some of these greenhouses that I'm talking about. So Carrie's going to go out to the garden now and actually show you, if I don't knock down all of our seeds in the process. Okay. Uh, she's going to go show you exactly what we're talking about as far as these greenhouses are concerned. We're going to show a little bit about how they're made and, um, and allow you to ask any questions about that too. So... Let me pull Carrie up here. Carrie, if you can hear me, your video isn't on. Oh, there it is. Okay, sorry, took me a minute. I usually don't do it on my phone, so that was the first for me. <laughs> well, hi, everybody. I am out here in our garden, and you can kind of see, hopefully everybody can hear me. Dale, you yell at me if if, uh, if not, so I can't see chat on my phone. I can hear you. Okay, cool. So I'm out here in the garden. You can see all of our little greenhouses here that we have, and we have them up and venting today because, as you can see, I'm wearing short sleeves out. It's a beautiful day. And the sun is out. It's awesome. It's a little windy, but we definitely needed to have these vented. So we have them down like this. And then right here we have some of the plastic sheeting right here that we were talking about. And then let me find... Let's see. This is the one that we were talking about that doesn't need to be vented. This is just the... Uh, insect netting or shade cloth however you want to see it and then we have all of these up on hinges like this too the reason why we added these hinges is because the first time we built these we just built frames using like rebar the pvc went into do you want to show how these pv how the pvc is attached to the frames that's one thing people ask a lot of questions about so what we did was we put these end caps and we screwed them into the PVC. Now on our Instagram, we have a video pinned that actually like shows all this in detail. So if you go to our Instagram, like one of those top three videos shows all these steps, but these are just like a, a PVC end cap that's screwed into the wood frame here. And that allows us to put that PVC right in there. And now it's a separate from the garden. Whereas when it was all one thing and we use rebar and all that, like we had to equip the plastic over it and it was a pain to harvest. And this makes it really easy to harvest. And you can see that white thing in the garden, that's a temperature sensor that I have. Um, I've got three of these scattered around the garden, so I, I get alerts if it gets above a certain temperature and I run out here and prop them open and do all that. But that is something handy, it's something I, I got it on Amazon. It was just like a standard or just a regular like temperature alert sensor for three units. I don't remember the exact name of it, but. I could put a link out to it later. But yeah, do you all have any questions over these little greenhouses? Like I said, we um, we have all the instructions on how to build them on our Instagram. It's one of our pinned videos there. They're really easy to build. I'm not great at building things, but I got a couple saws and some drills, and that's all you really need. And he did a great job. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you to our garden correspondent, Terry. <laughs> Back to the studio. Okay, I will see you all in a minute. Okay. All right, cool. That seemed like that worked out pretty well. So um, if you have any questions about those greenhouses, let us know. Again, you can find all the uh, directions on how to build them like in a one-minute video on our, on our Instagram. Um, all right, let me bring our presentation back up. And just remind everyone that we are giving away uh, one year free membership to the Seed to Spoon Premium app. That's going to give you... Unlimited plants, where you can add unlimited plants to your garden. It's going to give you access to all the features, including all the garden themes. Um, it's going to give you unlimited questions with Growbot. 
It's going to give you free shipping on all purchases as well. So welcome back. Hello. That was fast. <laughs> <laughs> well, just right there. Yeah. That worked out pretty well. We're in our garage and the seats are in an area. So we have a door like right there that goes right to the garden. So it's convenient. Yeah. We spend a lot of time in this garage right now. It's Yeah. It's been kind of cool though. We hang out pretty late planting seeds generally and acting goofy and stuff. Mm -hmm. So like I said, we're starting a lot of seeds. So we're spending a lot of time out in our seeds starting here. Okay. So let's talk about the things here and then we will do our giveaway and then we can get to any, any questions y'all have. So Carrie, you have some direct seeding tips. You want to yeah. Share. So I just wanted to touch on this real quick. Um, whenever you do go out there and direct seed um, and it's going to be cold, you do want to make sure that they stay moist so that you're watering them very thoroughly. And one way that we do that, we like to lay down this burlap over any area, especially things like carrots that we just seeded because those have just a longer germination time and they definitely need to stay moist while they're germinating. So we go through and we lay this burlap down and water the burlap really good. And then we let that sit until the seeds start to sprout and then we take it off. So that'll help to kind of protect it first of all from a little bit of the cold as well as keep it moist too. So double purpose. And I will say too, our greenhouse covers help a lot with this as well because it keeps the environment in there way more humid. Mm -hmm. So I, those temperature sensors I have have humidity too, and I'm a geek. I love to track all this and <laughs> tell you, we've been about 80% humidity on average. Uh, and so that's really helped with germination. Now you got to like make sure you're like, even if the weather's nice, you should vent them at that point because it could lead to mold buildup and stuff like that if it stays too humid too long. But for germinating seeds, it's perfect. Yeah, so, it's been going really well. It's basically like a biodome out there in the garden is what you're building. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we reached the point where we're going to go through and answer some questions, and then we will do a giveaway um, based on uh, all you have to do is uh, is leave a question or comment, and that gets you that gets you added. So let me go through and pull up the questions we've got so far. Um, for those of you that have followed us for a bit on these workshops, you know how excited Carrie gets about <laughs> any type of rainbow variety or purple variety. And y'all should have seen her when we were at Sam's Club the other day and we found a rainbow cauliflower. I was very excited. I can't wait. She freaked out. Yeah. I got a picture of her in the moment because it was so cute. <laughs> I'll put that on our Instagram later, but had to... Uh... Had to mention that. I'm sure I thought Michelle would get a kick out of that, especially. <laughs> it's a theme around here. Anytime we're starting seeds, there's a lot of rainbow seed talk going yes. on. Anything purple I can plant or red or any unique colors. I love it. So I'm not seeing a lot of questions today. I, uh, hey, Mary, how's it going? Um, I remember, remember that the radio show we did in Cincinnati with Ron oh, Wilson? Oh, yeah. 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 Awesome. Yeah, that was a that was a fun chat we had. We haven't done a lot of radio, but that was a different experience. But it was cool. Yeah, that was really fun. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so here's a question. I am overwintering peppers. When can I start moving them outside? Great question. Um, this is going to depend on where you are um, and when your last frost date is. Now, what you can do is if they're in containers, which it sounds like they are because you're overwintering them, um, you can move them out on nice days. Uh, pretty much any time the temperature is above 55 or 60 um, and it's sunny, uh, you can start to move them out, uh, especially if you get any days that are like in the 70s. Any kind of that, that, that's great. But you don't want to put them outside permanently for the season until you're way past the chance of last frost. And for peppers, I would go like two weeks past the last frost date because of how sensitive they are. Because if, if they get a cold snap early in their life, they'll be stunted and they won't really recover from it. So I'm pretty careful with peppers. Cheryl said that she got the uh, four inch bootstrap pots for their seedlings. And yes, they are awesome. If you're yeah, not familiar with too. these, we've been, so we've been testing out pretty much all the products we carry in our store. And we love these bootstrap trays. So for one, they come in all these different colors, which is awesome. Which, of course, you know I love. Yeah. But it also, <laughs> we're both geeks and we love, like, color coding things. So we've got a lot of color coding going yes. on. Um, these are their little 
six cell transplants. I've got a four one over here. I can grab somewhere, but I love it because these holes are on the bottom. Makes it really easy to pop it, pop it out with my pinky finger. Um, they're very sturdy. Like you cannot crush these things. Um, just, I can't say enough about these bootstrap farmer products. We've used them for quite a long time now and really excited that we can carry them in our store now and share them with you. They are going to be a little more expensive than the other seed starting trays you're going to find in the store, but there's a reason for that because the other seed starting trays will work great once and then probably never again because you're going to damage them in that first time or they're going to, they're going to become brittle. They're going to like, while you're carrying it, it's going to fold in half and all the water's going to dump all over you and your shirt and you get all this like dirt water all over you that trust me, it's happened. That's why we switched these bootstrap trays because they're really strong and, um, yeah, you're not we do actually have a picture of our chihuahua, like carrying our chihuahua in one of the bootstrap trays a while ago. I mean, and he's a hefty guy. He was like a good like 10, 15 pounds yep. and it didn't even bend at all where there's no way a standard tray would hold him. Yeah. I mean, I'm putting 15 pound bricks on them all the time because when yeah. like some of the microgreens that we grow require some like a weight on them to help them really grow right. So I'm putting a 15 pound brick on top of them and it's like doesn't even flex it or anything. Uh, great suggestion here from Addison. So leaves are our favorite form of mulch. Um, wood chips work also, but wood chips can have some downsides. Uh, it can tie up nitrogen. Um, they can be messy to work with and it can take a while to break down. Leaves uh, break down quickly. Worms love them and they also provide nutrients back into the soil pretty quickly as they break down and they don't really steal nitrogen like, uh, like, like wood chips can do. A uh, question about the greenhouses here from Kathy. I don't know how I missed that when you're out there. Um, is there something between the greenhouse plastic, like the frost blanket, which is more like a mesh? Right now, there's not. But if we say, for example, that we were going to get a sudden cold snap next week where it was going to be zero degrees, like unseasonably cold, and I was worried about these plants, I would do that. I would take the, the we have the regular greenhouse cover over with the plastic, also put a frost blanket I would just lay it over the plants, just like a blanket. Um, that's what I would do if I was getting like a really, really cold snap coming through. One moment, scroll and put <laughs> comments Got a lot of, a lot Yeah, a lot of, of nice. great, it's not a lot of questions, just a lot of nice things. I appreciate all the nice things though. <laughs> A lot of information about where you all are, Indiana. I have people from everywhere. That's so great. Okay. So should I use peat moss for my indoor plants? I'm growing cucumbers, lettuce, peppers, and broccoli. Awesome. Um, you can use peat moss. Uh, for our indoor plants, we typically either use a seed starting mix or we use coconut core. I like there to be some vermiculite in my seed starting mix, though, instead of just doing straight peat moss. But it would work. For sure. So if that's all you have, then then go for it. Grow for it, as you said last time <laughs> accidentally. Yep. Because um, it, it would work. It's just not going to work as well as something that has some vermiculite in it, which is what that seed starting mix has. Like anytime you see those little white flakes in your seed starting or potting mix, those things help out a lot. Hey, Barbara, thanks for downloading the app. Awesome. If you have any other questions, let us know. We're here every Tuesday. Uh, we're on Instagram 24 hours a day. It feels like you can <laughs> it message does feel us there. Like that. So, yeah. Oh, Carrie has some opinions about oh, Lutha. Oh, yes. April, you definitely need to grow Lutha. It's so much fun. We actually have a couple starts. Are you grabbing them? Yeah. Yes. So we started some Lutha indoors this year to get a head start on it because we want to do it for both, both ways. We want to both eat it as well as dry it for Lutha. In the past, we've let it go to drying them and made the sponges. It's so much fun. I highly recommend it. It's so cool. Now, full disclaimer, we started this too early and you don't really even need yeah. to start it indoors because it'll do fine outside. But Carrie's so excited about Lufa that we had to start a couple yes, just did. to make her stop talking about it. So, <laughs> Well, I wanted to make sure. So Lufa <laughs> has a really long growing season. And especially if you want to dry them, you want to make sure that they 
are done before you get your first fall frost. So I was like, we need to make sure we get it in the ground <laughs> fast. <laughs> um, Cheryl, you don't need to use burlap for, um, for radish, especially because it's so fast. Um, it wouldn't hurt for beets, but I don't know. We don't typically use it for beets. Carrots are the main thing. Mm -hmm. Carrots are the only thing that we use it on. Yeah. Anything that's like a really long germination time that you have to keep really moist. And carrots is, is, is something that it fits for that for us. So if there's something else that takes a while that you that you grow a lot of, I'd highly recommend it. All right, Barbara, here's here's <laughs> here's what I think. <laughs> we have a lot of people. So Park Seed is based out of uh, South Carolina. So a lot of our coworkers are in South Carolina. They could tell you for sure. Um, but if I were if I were you, I would take a shot on at least some of them. So the way that we plant a lot of our pretty much everything is we don't plant it all on one day. We roll it out in phases throughout the season. So we started planting broccoli a month ago. You know, every weekend, basically, we planted another round. And that pretty much went for everything that we planted. And this was for a couple of reasons. One is we don't want to have all of our harvest at the exact same time. Um, two is we also... Um, uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought for a second. Mm -hmm. um, so that we don't want to have our harvest all at the same time. And we also want to stagger it so that... If there's some sort of a, a ran, we had a random cold front come through and knocked out one of our waves of bok choy. Um, you know, if we would have planted all of our bok choy that day, that would have been devastating. But because we've been rolling it out in waves, you barely even notice out there. And we'll go just replace those ones that died with another wave that came a week after that. So I say go for it. And, go for it. <laughs> and nothing <laughs> about potatoes. We grow all of our potatoes in the smart pots. Specifically, the big ones, like the 20, 25 gallon smart pots, because it makes it really easy to harvest. And um, yeah, so I definitely recommend. Yeah, and in so that, that way, if, if you do have them in containers of some sort, if you do happen to have another unseasonably cold front come through, you can always just try and drag them into your garage or something like that. Question here from Julie. Is it okay to keep seeds in the freezer? So I would not store your seeds in the freezer. You can store them in the refrigerator and that will make them last longer. Um, some seeds you actually kind of have, have to go through a process called cold stratification in order for them to grow correctly. So if you ever see that on a seed packet, it means it has to go through a cold. And one way that people do that sometimes is by putting them in the freezer or take like garlic is like this. Um, you can take garlic and put it in a bag of soil and put that in the freezer. Um, there's different things you can do to trick your plant into thinking that um, that it went through a, uh, went through a freeze. But you don't want to store your swords your your seeds in the in the freezer. Your swords in the freezer. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to store your seeds or your swords in the freezer. <laughs> Awesome. I see a lot of comments about here about how y'all have suggested our app and how much oh, you love the app. It. And you know, I just yeah. want to say I really appreciate this. I think this has one, been one of the keys that has allowed our app to grow has been through all of you sharing it with your friends, leaving reviews, you know, sharing our our videos on um, on Instagram and YouTube and everywhere else and Facebook and all that kind of stuff. So um, really appreciate all of you. Just want to say that. Uh, great question here. So I have seeds that have not been stored in anything. How do I know if they're no longer good? There is a test you can do before you plant them. I actually have a YouTube video about this from last year because I went through and tested some seeds that we had. Awesome. Andrew, we see if you could find that video and put it in uh, in chat. Um, but just at a high level, um, I, basically just the soak test where you put them in water and the ones that float or... Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, you, so you don't want to do this until you're planting because this is going to make it where you need to plant them at this point. But you can take a handful of them out of the, like, if you have a large thing of seeds, take a few of them, put them in water. The ones that sink are viable. The ones that float are not. 
It's not 100%, but it's pretty good. You can also just put them in like a moist paper towel um, now and just see if a couple of them germinate that way. Now, obviously, don't take all of your seeds and do that, but just test like a couple of them from the packet just to see if it or if they'll do anything. So that way, just keep that paper towel moist and it'll work. Okay, we'll do a couple more questions. And then we will announce a winner. We'll come back and answer as many questions as we can until we get to the end of the hour. Um, Mary says she has a ton of oak leaves. Does she need to break them up before putting them on the garden? So it definitely will help if you run them through some sort of a just mow over them. Is something I used to do. Just take all my leaves in a pile and mow over them a whole lot until they're all shredded up and then put those in the garden. If you don't do that, especially oak leaves, they're going to mat up and form paper, basically, and make it where sometimes the water can pull on top of it, spill off the sides, and everything else and get water. So for that reason, and also to make it easier for the worms uh, to chew it up, you can you, uh, you shred it up, and that definitely helps. Okay, question here about how you should store uh, your potatoes until you can plant them. Um, they will be better off in a cool, dark environment. So the coolest, darkest environment you have, cool to an extent. You don't want to be below 40 or 50 probably. But if you have something that's, you know, if you have like a, in Oklahoma, we have storm shelters. So if you have a storm shelter, that's a great place to store basement. them. A basement if you're in the north. Yeah. Um, you know, a, bottom of your pantry. I mean, in the past, we, we just we put them in like actual just kitchen, kitchen drawers and cabinets like it's just somewhere dark. Yep. Um, we don't add earthworms to our raised beds. Um, it's like the field of dreams thing. If you build it, they will come. That's pretty mm -hmm. much all you got to do. If you have plenty of compost in uh, in, in your bed then you're going to get plenty of earthworms. They're, they're going to, so, um, now if you're growing in like a container or something like that, I still don't know if I would do it because I don't know how well they'd survive, especially like freezes and stuff like that. I mean, at that point I'd probably just be, uh, we have a worm farm and we get worm castings from that. So that's probably what I would be doing. A uh, question about when you should transplant in the deep South. This is all going to depend on uh, on exactly where you live and that is that's why we built our app so if you download our app which the qr code in the very top left will take you to our website where you can download it and that will calculate the dates uh, for you based on based on where you are okay let's go ahead and do our giveaway and then i see we got a lot more questions so um we'll circle back and get to those so our winner andrew do you have one looks like he does And our winner for today is Afia Israel. Yay, Hopefully I said that name. Congratulations. Um, email us at info at seedtospoon.net. And Andrew will get you set up with one year um, of our of our Seed to Spoon app. So congratulations. I know I saw a lot of questions from them pop up. So definitely not awesome. surprised they were, they were the winner there. All right. Let's go back to our questions here. And oh, I know I, I forgot to mention Growbot. So if we do not oh, get yeah. to, uh, to your question, download our app called Growbot. So you can find Growbot in the app store just by searching for the word Growbot. And, or you can also find it in our Seed to Spoon app as well. So Growbot is an AI chatbot that we have trained on our gardening data and it uh, will answer your gardening questions. So we use it all the time, especially for things like germination temperatures. Like I don't have all that memorized. It's been great to pop in a grow bot and say, what is the optimum germination temperature for spinach, for radish or whatever? And it's really helped out, especially for a lot of these flowers that we're growing for the first time. Because mm -hmm. another thing we're trying to do is grow a lot of the flowers that we carry at Park Seed. Um, you know, I really haven't been that engaged with flowers throughout our gardening journey, if you will. But um, I've really taken an interest the, pa the past year, and I'm excited about all these flowers we're growing. So we have a lot of that going on, and a lot of the flowers require specific germination temperatures. Well, we don't have that information in the app because all these fl flowers aren't necessarily in the app, and Robot is perfect for that. 
So I've been asking Grobot a lot about, you know, that type of stuff. How deep should I plant this seed? How many days does it take for this flower to germinate? Like, yeah, I've been doing a lot of that too. Yep. (laughs) So check out Grobot. And um, let's get back to the questions that we've got here and we'll get through as many as we can. So the question is, how long can I keep beans in a pot? Um, So a couple variables here. Um, Beans grow in a couple different ways. One of the ways is as a bush and they'll produce all their beans at once. And that's in like 60 to 70 days generally. Um, Another way that they grow is, is as a vine and those are called pole beans and they will grow up a trellis and put beans off continuously. So it's just going to depend on which one of those you have. Um, so it's a hard to answer that question, but hopefully, hopefully that helps out. Okay. Question about sweet potatoes. So sweet potatoes, the way that we start them is you take an actual sweet potato and then you want to put it in water, basically like the bottom of it starts to grow these little sprouts that come off. It's not the right term. Sprouts isn't the right term, but it grows something that comes off of the sweet potato. Um, and then you cut those and then that is where you grow from. So, uh, we'll have a video that details all of this whenever we get to sweet potato season, it's going to be a bit, that's one of the, um, yeah, one of the questions here. So, um, that's, that's one of the things that, uh, so uh, they're in zone seven, seven A as well, which is pretty much what we're in. So you're looking at May or June before you start to do sweet potatoes. Um, and then that's one of those things that's going to grow all summer. Even when it's really hot outside, sweet potatoes do great. That's one of sweet potatoes and okra. And yeah. I feel like we do typically post <clears throat> or plant our potatoes. No, just that's our regular potatoes, not sweet potatoes. I was going to say St. Patrick's Day, but that's, <laughs> that's potatoes. <laughs> Slips. Oh, that's yep. what it was Thank called. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> Appreciate it. Okay. Um, hey, this is Sue from We Know Sue. Yeah. yeah I see. Good to see you, Sue. Um, I can definitely comment on horse manure compost because our first year, <laughs> second year of growing food, uh, we were really into like full scale. We're going to make all of our own compost. And I was buying horse manure from a horse farm in Oklahoma. And uh, turns out the horses that were at that farm were grazing on fields that were sprayed with amino pyrrolid, which was a broadleaf herbicide that killed everything that wasn't grass. And my tomatoes aren't grass, so they died. And it was very sad because I was very invested. This is my Mm -hmm. second year. I thought I had things figured out. I had just like finished master gardener class. I was like, I, I know what I'm doing and everything died. So I like went full science on this and, um, figured it. And then I got with a soil scientist at Oklahoma state university. I remember we were like, I was like, what happened to my tomatoes? Like like, someone tell me what happened. (laughs) And I learned that that is what happened was that the compost that I had made, uh, from that horse manure had basically killed my garden. And that was the point where I said, I'm not going to bring in any more outside products and to make compost unless I know exactly where it came from and how it was made. Um, now we're on a farm, so it's really easy for me to get compost. I got, I got poop everywhere <laughs> from all the animals. Um, but you know, back when I lived in the city, I couldn't. So I really became a strong advocate of testing compost at that point. Um, so even, you know, like if you buy compost from somewhere, make sure you test it. An easy way to do that is to sprout pea seeds in a little container, like a four inch container, give it 21 days. And at the end of 21 days, if you don't see anything wrong with it, you're probably okay. Uh, you want to have a control group. So you want to have like one little pot that's just like seed starting mix or potting mix you bought from the store that are from somewhere that, you know, is sterile. And then the other container is that potty mix mixed with like half of your compost and then grow both of them side by side. And then that'll tell you it takes 21 days though. And when you're starting gardening, you don't want to wait 21 days to start your garden. So um, that's one thing to 
Yes, but yes, yeah, I but can this comment is, on horse manure. This compost. is where like the worm castings and rabbits, like you can do rabbits in the city, and that's what we did. We ended up getting rabbits when we were in the city. So that's where those things come in handy. Okay, a couple other questions here. Any tips for growing potatoes in a smart pot? Um, it's very easy to grow them. Typically what we do is we will fill the, the smart pot halfway um, with, with our soil mix, and then we'll plant the potatoes in there, just kind of put them in a circle and then one in the middle. And then as they grow, we will keep adding soil to it and, and just leave it where the tops are like two or three inches above the soil until eventually like the smart pot is full, full of soil and we still, and then we have potatoes in a few months so it's really easy to grow in containers you just like one of the cool things about it is you, you dump them out on in a wheelbarrow or something and the kids start going through them it's like an easter egg hunt they have a lot of fun it's really fun yeah okay are there any other questions y'all have that we didn't get to um, if we didn't answer it yet, it means I, I probably didn't see it when I was scrolling up. So um, throw it back in the chat if you're still here and you want us to, to answer your question. And we'll stick around for a few more minutes. Oh, I see rainbow okra. Rainbow okra. <sighs> We've got to find this. Uh oh. Yeah. Michelle's our rainbow correspondent. Yes, She's she letting is. us know about all the rainbow varieties. <laughs> Appreciate it, Michelle. <laughs> I need to find this. That's exciting. I love it. <laughs> We haven't grown okra in a while. We, we need to so do I will say, if it's your horse and you know you're not giving it food that's sprayed with chemicals, then go for it. It's going to be fine. But just make sure it's you know you know what that horse is eating. Well, and I think too, like we switched over to like your aunt getting some from her because we yeah. knew what those horses were eating and. Yep. Know who feeds the horse. Yes. Awesome. Um, CJ, Growbot is not perfect, and sometimes it hiccups and makes up stuff. Um, it's just <laughs> the nature of AR. Sometimes it makes up features that are in the app, and I've got to go in there like, Growbot, stop saying we have this feature. <laughs> and then it makes me like feel like we really need to make that feature if Growbot's going to say we have it. I think Growbot's like, pushing us to work harder. I'm not sure what's going on with AI, mm -hmm. but... But anyway, that's what's going on. So yeah, it, sometimes if it, we're, I'm, I'm sorry, it, it's going to get better and better. We're going to keep training it. Um, if you want, um, I wish I knew a specific corn to recommend. I promise you after this year, I will, because we're going to be growing a lot of our corn that we have, but any of the sweet varieties are going to be awesome. Yeah. There is like a super sweet sugar one or something like that. All right. Well, I think that pretty much brings us to the end for today. What are we talking about next week? Uh, oh, no. Got me. I even created <laughs> I created the event already, too. I was prepared, but I was... We, last week, we actually knew what we were doing the Direct next week. Direct sowing. Direct sowing. Okay, so we're talking all about... Um, the things that we're going to be direct sowing outside and we have been direct sowing outside. So we've talked a lot about indoor seeds starting so far. Next week, we're talking all about stuff that you don't have to worry about any of that with. It's easy. You just put a seed in the ground and you water it and you watch it grow. So those are things Maybe we're talking we'll about next from, week. From the garden next week, since we'll be talking Maybe. about the garden. We live next to an Air we'll Force see. base, so there's a lot of airplanes. Yeah, especially at this it's time. Typically why we got to be careful about when we, where we make videos. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks everyone for joining us. Uh, again, we appreciate all of you. Thank you everyone for telling people about our app, for using our app. Um, we hope you like the new features that we've rolled out. Um, we'll make another video soon that details the new stuff, but it's all right there on the dashboard. So you're not going to miss it. It's um, we're really excited about it. So we're excited about this growing season. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you next week. Yep. See you next Tuesday.